Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Musings by Nikki. I'm Nikki, and today we are going to um, finally make the felt inserts for our needle books. So we are in the middle of our project, right, making a needle book, um, needle book slash journal. And today we're going to work on making this felt insert, so the needle book portion of our um, needle book journal. And then we'll make a journal to go into the back of it uh, in the next video or two here. So today, we'll see how long this video takes, and um, today we're going to work on making the felt insert. So I have, you know, that's my example one, and by the end of this I will have five to go in my shop because I'm working on them in various stages and methods. So I've got my examples kind of in various stages here. I apologize for the um, long absence here in between the middle of this project. Sorry, I'm pulling strings off all the time. I had a flare up of the um, inflammation and swelling in my wrist and my fingers and I just literally couldn't bend you know my middle fingers beyond like this so had to take a break for a second but I'm back I'm good thank you Marnie at physical therapy <laughs> so um, anyway we are going to work through them today so I we're gonna make the insert so today the materials the basic materials that you will need to finish this next part is you will need your cover so the covers that we made the quilted covers or whatever kind of cover you're going to use you could make a standard fabric cover you could make a hard cover for this and just sew a felt you know insert into it whatever you want to do but my last couple of videos have been making these quilted covers so <clears throat> I also have um, really bad allergies. Our, my fall allergies are out of control. So if I'm sneezing a lot, I apologize now and coughing. So you're going to need your cover and then you're going to need your um, some felt. So you're going to need a couple of pieces of bigger pieces of felt like this. And then you're going to need um, scrap pieces. So whatever you cut off, keep those scraps or if you have scrap pieces you're going to need those. A quick word about felt. So one of my viewers commented in one of my earlier videos or my intro video, I think for this and said that if you're making, so let's, you know, kind of be real. The ones that I'm making here are kind of like a novelty version. It's um, definitely usable and you can definitely use it and you can put your pins and scissors and needles and all that stuff and keep it all in here and use it totally like a needle book like you would. Um, but I'm using just the regular felt from the craft store. I am not using a wool felt. She said that if you want to do this like a legit way, if you're just going to make the needle insert, you know, and the needle book insert or something, and you are really wanting to store your pins and sewing needles and stuff in here, then you might want to invest in some wool felt because the wool felt, she said, will keep your needles from like rusting. It'll keep them safer in better shape. So, um, I'm not using wool felt, but if you want to, you certainly could get the wool felt and use that in place of the regular felt. It's totally up to you. That's your choice. Mine is not wool felt, just disclosure, but that was a good tip from her, so thank you for that information. So you're going to want felt and some scraps of felt um, or whatever you cut off your pieces here and just save them because we'll use those. You'll also want, I've got my little pile of scrap fabric. This is leftover pieces and strips from making the covers. So I'm just going to use those same pieces to kind of match the outside cover to the inside pockets and stuff that we're going to create today. Um, little bits like this. So I've got a couple little pieces. This is a little piece off, I believe, like a pillowcase or the top of a sheet. And it's got some little embroidery. And you can tell this has been washed a thousand times because it's all matted back here. But little bits like this of little embroidery and stuff that you go, you don't really know how to use. This makes a great little pocket inside here to put our ephemera and pieces in. So Little bits like this work really well too. And then up here, I've got a ton of different kinds of ribbons and laces and um, little bits of notions. I've got some uh, rickrack <laughs> and uh, different, here's some different types of edging and stuff. So I've got a whole 
pile of this at my disposal kind of up here and we're going to trim pockets with that and um, you know kind of add it in in a few different places and you'll see in just a second when I show you my examples and then you're also going to need some um, embroidery floss if you're going to do the method where we blanket stitch around the edge if you are including scissors in yours you'll want your pair of scissors on hand just so you can make sure that it fits well into the pocket we're going to create for those as well so i think that is my oh and if you have leftovers of making your cover right so if you have leftover pieces of the quilted fabric um your like quilt top stuff this would be a great time to use that too you can incorporate that into pockets as well so i'm going to show you um the various stages we're going to go through here in just a second this is, um, I've got my four working covers going on here. So we're going to start with our, we've got, I've got my cover here, right? And then I've got my too large to fit in my cover, right? Because when I go like this, it's high and low. So this is my felt that is too large to fit inside my cover. So I'm going to show you how I cut it down and kind of the sizing that I do for that. And that will cut down into a piece like this that we've just been staring at where the back piece is just slightly larger than the front piece. You can kind of see it in the shadow here, right? This side's too close to a light or something. But the back piece is going to be just slightly larger. And that's because it's really bulky. And when we fold it closed, um, it also creates pockets on the end. So, so we'll do that. Then we will move to the next stage where while it is while they are still two separate pieces we will create our little needle flap and back here is our pocket for our scissors back in there and then we've got a couple of little pockets we've got a pocket here and then this is where we will put our needles so we've got a little needle pouch there and then we've got a couple of pockets up in front and on the back we've got a doubled up pocket back here so we'll create some pocket um, layers and we'll do that so we can sew right through onto the felt that will eventually become the pockets on the ends before we blanket stitch around which will then look like this so um, at some point then we will blanket stitch around the edges therefore like creating a giant tube <laughs> so um, because then we will eventually sew that into our cover and it will become the needle book insert so here's a different version of another needle holder here and some pockets here this is a pocket and a needle holder this is the flip up here and there is a scissor pocket back there and then there's a doubled up pocket on the front so there are various options and this cover I left with just the felt instead of lining it with another fabric so you can actually pin things all over this felt as well. So we've got this. Then I created a little, it's almost like a tea bag thing, but you can put needles in here. It's just felt in a layer of fabric and it's on a piece of trim. And we're actually going to use that um, to accent sewing it in and I machine, machine stitch it in. So that'll go up along that and then it will just flop around and you can tuck it in a pocket or it can just be a loose little needle holder. So I'll show you how I made that too. So let's go back. That's why I think this is going to be a longer two part video probably. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So first we want to cut down our piece of felt to the size that we want it. Okay. So notice here how I've got a little bit of extra space and it's about two finger widths on either side here. And that's because when we sew this in, we're going to sew it just slightly skewed to the front side here. And when it closes, we want there to be overlap here so that, you know, needles and scissors and things like that aren't um, too close to the edge. Plus in the back, we're going to end up putting attachments to tie our journal in right so we'll get to that but we need to cut our felt down to, to size first and actually I'm gonna take a minute here and blow my nose and take a sip of water and I'll be right back all right I'm back <laughs> so I also threw an apron on because I remembered for just a quick second how absolutely full of little shredded pieces of um, 
see strings and fabric this gets uh, I also usually keep one of these on my table on my desk it's one of those lint rollers because as things get really full of um, strings it's kind of nice to just clean everything off rather than picking every little thing anyway so I've got my apron on because I've got to go to a game my daughter has a volleyball game later today uh, which you guys she made it onto varsity which I'm super excited about she's a sophomore and she didn't think she'd get to play varsity this year but she is playing varsity and that makes us all very excited but it also makes for very long away games and very late nights <laughs> so um, anyway she's got a game so I got to protect my clothes with my apron here so I don't get all full of shreds and have to change again so the first thing we're going to want to do is line up the edge, the top edge or bottom edge of your felt. Felt has, um, kind of just by its nature, it's got a little bit of a weird stretch and it doesn't necessarily behave like fabric in that there's one stretch in one direction and not so much the other. So um, you have to just kind of be constantly lining things up and making sure that where you're at, you know, that things aren't getting skewed or whatever. So I've got my bottom edge lined up pretty well here. And I'm going to lay that down. So you can see I've got binding on the top and the bottom of my cover. And so those are going to act as kind of like my template for where I want my um, felt insert to go. So I am going to bring it down right to the top of my binding on the bottom here and line that up and I'm just kind of eyeballing because of course my cover is eyeballed as well it is not exact none of this is exact like I said there's always a trigger warning here for quilters and sewers this is me doing my smash bang kind of job of this um, so I am going to eyeball it here and even though the shadow makes it look like there's like it's skewed in real life it doesn't and so then I can see that I've got hangover here on top right and it's about like I don't know two inches probably that I need to cut off um, because I can look on my measurements on my mat here and see that I've got about two inches to get down to where I want to go but the way that I'm gonna do this again is a total eyeball method I am going to raise this up another bindings length like so so now I've got my binding and then I've got one more, you know, imaginary length of that and then hold the whole thing together and I'm literally just going to trim across the top. I am going to use a sharp fabric scissor again, if you are somebody that likes measurements and all of the fancy you know to save these pieces here you should have two cut off pieces save those and we'll use them for things all right if you like all the exacting measurements go ahead and measure and do it that way and everything I don't do that well I do do that for making books and covers and things but this this is kind of like a free form thing so now I've got about my length here when I center it I've got about my bindings length there and on the bottom but as you can see, this is way longer than we want it this way. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my bottoms and tops stay lined up. And I'm just going to scoot it over on my, this will be my front cover, right? So I'm going to scoot it over as far as I want it to go. And I'm going to say I want mine to stop right at about the edge of the binding again on this side. So that's about where I want it to be. And then I'm going to take this, uh, well, no, nope, I'm going to not do that. I'm going to just line up the edges and cut it straight first. So I've got it lined up over here. Now, this part is kind of up to you how wide you want this. You can have it be the full length of your book. And then when it closes, it's going to come all the way out to the edge like that, right? You can certainly do that, but I like mine to come back a little ways just so that there's some binding edge there to really seal it up because you will have some little free floating stuff in here. And, you know, in order for that to not fly out, if you're moving this around a lot or store, however you store this or use it. Um, so I'm making sure I'm lined up because felt is wonky. 
and then I'm pulling it over to where I want the edge to be and then I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to give it about an eyeballed another length of seam binding edging and I'm going to make sure that I'm lined up here because that's going to give me the square <laughs> and then I'm going to hold it together very carefully and now I'm going to trim off on this edge again if you like to measure now's your chance to measure and do this the knot Nikki way and I'm not even offended save even these little pieces okay so now when we flip it back over my goal is to have my insert my two pieces of felt so remember these are two pieces together and there's my outline of my binding so see I even without measuring I've achieved kind of what I'm looking for so it's up to you now the one thing that I want to do is make this top piece just slightly shorter and when I say slightly I'm not even talking like a quarter inch I'm talking maybe like an eighth of an inch just slightly and so to do that I keep them lined up and then I'm going to trim the tiniest little sliver off just the top piece and like I said I'm not even doing a quarter inch I'm doing like you know this tiny little strip this you don't have to save because look it's going to break apart and there's no point in saving that <laughs> so here i've got my just my little bit of an overlapped edge okay and then i want to do the same thing on this side all right so now we've got our insert ready to make pockets and everything on now this is where it gets um to two different options. The option that I do is, let me grab my example one again. The one that I do is that we're going to bind the edges of it. Okay, so like this one, this is the one I need. We're gonna bind the edges of it with a blanket stitch, so a slow stitch, so that when we sew it in, these will create large pockets and you can fit all kinds of notes, sewing pattern stuff in there, ephemera, whatever you want to put in there, right? You could sew it through this way and then there'd be two pockets. So you have kind of options. You can, this is how all of mine are going to be created because I'm using this as a needlebook slash journal. So I like these big pockets for storing all kinds of stuff. You might not want the big pockets. So what you could do is sew your two pieces in without blanket stitching them together. You could still blanket stitch around each one individually, but you could also make a needle book that just is four pages like this. And you could blanket stitch around the edges of those and add pockets or needle keepers there and have four a little more flimsy felt pages without the giant pockets. Does that make sense? So you could, when we get to this place, you could plan on just sewing it without turning it into the two end pockets and have it just be a four page book like this. And you could put more pockets and things on there. I'm not doing that. I like the two big pockets and then we're gonna put a journal in the back. So now is where you can kind of get creative. The one thing that I'm going to do the same in each one of mine is this big, flip up pocket like this and it is lined with some paper can you see that on the inside you can there's paper on the inside of this and that is because these scissors are super sharp and pointy and if you try to slide them into a pocket they will catch on the felt the whole way down so i line this with paper because then it just slides in so much easier and that's going to be my scissor pocket back there and the nice thing is is it's a nice deep pocket so um, if you don't want to create like a, a a tie over thing or piece like that you don't have to worry about that on this one and I'll show you an option to make that but most of the time these can just slide right in and we'll customize that piece to fit your scissors I'll show you how I do that
okay? And then you can make your pockets and your needle keepers kind of however you want to do them on here. This is where I'm saying we'll edge them with some lace and some trims and stuff using scraps of paper. Whoops, we need that to stay all together. All right, so the one that I'm working on is a bit bigger. This is the this cover is the one that fits my um, from my sewing my needle and thread uh, kit that I just printed down a size, and so that will fit that booklet into the back. That's why it's a little taller than the other ones. The one I was just showing you is my example. This one fits my new needle book kit, so that is why. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you will want to go watch one of the first videos. Uh, but this is my new needle book kit, and so this is a little bit more short and squat version of the journal. So in order to fit all of that, we've got a smaller cover here. And you could just make this a teeny tiny cover as well. It's up to you. I mean, this is really so customizable. All right. So here is where we're going to put that flip over pocket and you can put that on the inside. You can put it wherever you want to. I've just been putting them on this side, but honestly, you can put it wherever you want to. Um, maybe on this one, we'll put it on the front. Who knows? There we go. So for this, you're going to want one of your biggest scrap pieces of felt that you have. So um, I want one that's going to be you know, almost as wide kind of as my folded over page. I'm going to move my cover out because we don't really need the cover for this, all this stuff. But it does help to kind of line up your pages, pages here, right? Make sure that your smaller piece is centered. Then I will put my hand like that or a piece, a pair of scissors or something to help it fold. And now we have the idea of what size our you know pages here and then we're going to create a fold over and this is going to be our pocket back here for our scissors so you want one of your bigger scraps if you don't if you literally just cut you know have this piece and you don't have big enough pieces of scraps or anything you can take let me just grab a few here well you don't have to make this out of felt but it works better if it's made out of felt let me find not white pieces so it makes a little more sense what I'm doing here. You could take a couple of your strip pieces and um, just kind of sew them together and then it would just give it more texture, right? So you could sew some pieces together to achieve however wide a pocket you want and then they would just fold over the other way around. But I happen to have a couple of pieces that are big enough to create my fold over pocket. So I'm going to use this scrap of blue here and it's going to be my fold over pocket. And I kind of do this like matchbook style so that there's a space left and we're going to put some lace and stuff along there. Now this is where you get to use up, this works really great, to use up scraps of um, cardstock that you would normally you know, if you've got pieces like you often, I will buy a pad. So I have this pad right here. This stays in the back of my thing. This was like a wedding. It's called Love Story. And this is a wedding one. And it's got all this shiny gold. And I mean, this just does not belong in my normal journals usually. Like this page. What the heck, right? So, um, like that. <laughs> So this, this is a great place to, to use this Mr. and Mrs. paper that I will probably never use again and throw it into something like this. So I've got a piece of that and whoa, shiny. That doesn't belong in my normal vintage journals. So this is a great thing to use as my liner for behind here in the pocket. And I can even flip it and fold it like this, you know, fold it like this. So when it goes behind there, you won't ever even see that silver which is lovely. All right. So I've got my paper scissors as well as my fabric scissors. So I remember to use these when I cut this. So here's what we want to do. We want to, um, if I, if I lined it all the way to this bottom, my scissors would slide too far down into the pocket. So I want them to stick up just slightly so I can see the tops of the fancy little edging on my scissors here. So what I'm going to do is fold my pocket over. I'm 
just line up my edges and make a little pocket here. And then I'm going to lay it over top here and I'm going to, again, kind of just check. So if my scissors hit the bottom here, that pocket is too deep. So I'm going to kind of go to the middle here and put my scissors over. Oh, I don't have to. There we go. I'm just folding it up so I can kind of hit my scissors to that bottom of that edge. And then I'm going to take a pen and mark right about where I want the top of my scissors to kind of stick out. So I want them to stick out right about there. Then I am going to fold it back the other direction and trim that off. So hopefully, when I stick this into and kind of dry fit it, okay, that's about how far I want it to stick out of the top of my pocket. So now if we hold them next to each other, these edges are going to come up right up to the top of this. Oops, let me make sure I'm in frame. They're going to come right up even with the top of the pocket, but you'll notice that it's not nearly as long on the bottom. So I will show you how we achieve sewing them in. We can set the scissors aside for a second because this is going to become our pocket back here. So you kind of need to decide how much of an overlap you want at the bottom. Mine is about an inch that I'm leaving um, open here at the bottom so I can put some lace and make it obvious that this is a flip up, right? And so then I'm going to flip it over, open up my pocket like this, and line up the top edge of my pocket with the top edge of the fold, okay? So here, let me show you again. I've got my flip open pocket like this, and I have now lined up where that fold is, where I've decided the fold is going to be, the top edge of my pocket. And we are now going to stitch right across the top of this. So we're going to open it up because we don't want to stitch it shut. So holding that in place, or you could put a pin in if you want. So let's line everything up again because I'm messing with it. Got my, you know, thing lined up and my edge. Now I'm going like this to line it up right along the top edge. Okay, so you could, like I said, you could throw a pin in, but I don't want to pin through my paper. But I can also oops, go ahead and use my pen because, you know, we're not going to ever see this. It's going to be back behind this pocket. And I'm just sketching a line on here. So when I get over to my sewing machine, because I'm going to open this up. When I get over to my sewing machine, I line up my paper with my line that I drew on, right? And I'm going to zigzag stitch right edge to edge of the felt right this paper together with this. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. All right. I'm going to just trim off my ends. And now I can show you that I zigzagged right over the edge. So I actually didn't zigzag on the, you know, all the way both edges on the paper. I zigzag right over the edge. So it catches that edge and kind of makes it one with the fabric. Now when I fold it back over, I've got this super nice edge on there that my scissors aren't going to catch when I get it in there, right? So I've got a nice edge along there. So you you should have a piece of felt like this, right? Then this will fold back over and this will get sewn onto the back and we'll do that in a second. And then when you turn it, when you turn it over, you should see a zigzagged line and that will note the top of your pocket and this should fold down. Your flap should fold down kind of right where you intended it to. Oh, I hear the jets out today. We might have a flyover. If you see me get scared, it's because they fly over like a thousand miles an hour right down over our house. <laughs> That's the thing about living in a big rural open area for them. They get to fly all over. Okay, so now 
And the next piece is we need to attach this to the fabric insert, right? So we've got our little pocket. And right now, if I just went ahead and sewed around this, then I would have this thing flapping back here, the back side of our pocket, the liner, the paper liner. So you have to decide how high on the on the insert you want it. I want to leave some space down here because if I want to put a little twisty windy guy button closure or something, and I plan to have a little lace hanging off here. So I want to put it high enough, but I want to make sure that I'm not putting it too high that where my stick my scissors stick out, it's not going to be, you know, way too high to the top because we are going to be blanket stitching too. So you have to kind of allow for the blanket stitching around the free edges. So I'm happy with that about there. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to make sure that I'm kind of as, you know, squared up as possible. And I'm going to go like this. And I'm, because, you know, I'm just going to put a couple little marks. I don't need huge marks on here, but I've got a few marks so I know where I'm going to line this up. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open this all up, get this felt out of the way and open up my pocket and I am going to go, now here's my, let me put a line here just so you can see. You don't have to do this. This is just me being able to give you a visual on where my fold is since it's white paper. <laughs> so that's where my fold is, right? So I'm going to go sew through just the top one. I'm going to leave the middle insert, right? I'm going to take just the outside piece, right? And I'm going to open this up because now I know where I want my thing because I've made a mark. And I'm going to line it up and I'm going to start here and sew up, across, and down. And leave the fold so that we can then fold that all back over and then we'll catch the top edge as we go around here. So we get this felt out of the way. We've got our top edge there. We've got our mark where we want this. And I'm going to go sew up, across, and over. I'm going to zigzag over the edge of the paper. I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now my fabric scraps, my felt scraps. Felt wants to grab itself, right? So if there's like felt scraps over here, it wants to get them all. <laughs> anyway, so now I have stitched over the edge my entire back piece onto my felt. So when I close this back up, right, and turn it this way, because this is the front of my insert. Now you should have your pocket like this, right? And this end is open, but that'll get covered up in a second. And we'll never see this because it'll be behind here. So then we've got our whole thing, right? And you've got your two edges of paper liner there. The last thing that you need to do to complete this then is to go from your zigzag stitch here down across and around this and that will complete the inserted pocket and it'll finish this edge here. Um, if you want to at this point, here is where you can, let me move this so I don't lose that. Here's where you can decide if you want to put some edging on because you can definitely stitch over that and kill two birds with one stone. So let's see, what do I got? I'm going to put Where's that little, maybe I'll put some of this ruffle edge along there since I've got room here because um, this is a little taller. So I'm going to snip off a piece of this because as I sew, I will then catch this down there as well. And then, um, so I'll go do that and then I'll come back and I'll tell you the next part. <laughs> All right, guys, so I have now, starting up at this line, I have zigzagged down. Then I caught this lace as I zigzagged the bottom edge of this, and then I came back along and I finished this. So now it is a fully formed pocket for my scissors to go in. And you can see they don't catch on the felt like this because it's paper so it catches 
it doesn't catch. It just goes right in, slides right in, which is super nice. So now we've created our first little pocket. Okay, but I'm going to take these out now because they're heavy and they do not allow you to sew nicely around things. So now you can decide if you want to put some edging on this front flap here. These edges are going to stay raw. If you wanted to, you could sew down them, although I just find a hard time finding a nice starting place up here, but it's totally up to you. You can also put a little pocket on the front of this, or um, let me show you this one again. I happen to have this little butterfly uh, piece of crochet, so I put um, a piece of fabric behind it, and then I just stitched around that. And well, first I stitched the butterfly onto the fabric and then stitched the fabric on so I didn't so I just had a nice square here. So and then here I've layered up some lace on the bottom here and then some rick rack and some floofy lace here. This is kind of where you get to really make the embellishments your own and decide what you want to do. So um let's see, what am I gonna do here? I will probably take a piece of fabric. Decide what I've got here. I'm going to look through, oh, this is a weird piece. I'm going to look through my little lace appliques and see if I've got anything fun that I could fit on here, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I found this little piece of crochet lace. So I have got this big sample of like somebody trying, just kind of sampling different crocheted lace pieces and I have a piece of this kind of greenish sagey green that fits just perfectly and um, then I'm gonna catch and I pulled out a couple things and I think I like this another layer of ruffly lace along the bottom of it along the bottom of the pocket so I'm gonna grab a piece of that And that'll go stitched along the very bottom of the flap and I'm going to stitch this crocheted piece onto the green and then stitch that whole piece onto the flap here. So of course I'm doing all of this with it kind of folded open and this folded back so I can sew just through this top layer, right? And then sew my edge on. So I'm going to do all that and I'll be right back. All right. So I have got my stuff all attached and you can see my sew lines there and I've got this ruffle on the bottom so when it folds over now here's you know later on we can choose to embellish I've got some bulb pins and I'll put some a couple buttons on and we'll just attach that too. Um, so this pocket for all intents and purposes is finished the way it is right now. The thing, the option that you can do, right? So let's pretend like this is closed and here's our pocket. The option <coughs> that you can do is if you want to attach something to keep these scissors in place, what you can do is take a, you're gonna want a button or something down here because we're gonna bring us a, a thread over top of this and wind it on something and that'll just hold this in place. You don't want to attach the button here because clearly that will just, you know, like it, there's no stability. So it has to be come down onto at least this base piece somehow, wherever you want to put that. The best uh, thing to do is grab a button. It can have a little shank but you don't want it to be, you know, you don't want it to be a shank button like this because that will stick way too far up. So let's just pick a button. Hmm, that's kind of cute. Although it might not stick out enough in the... This is just my uh, little bin of buttons I keep on my... Well, that's kind of cute. It's just pale. This is just what I keep on my desk. It's got charms and randomness in there. So now I'm going to take some of my embroidery floss. I'm going to cut myself a little piece here, and then we're going to use the other piece to attach. I'm going to thread my needle. 
Okay, sorry I did that off camera because um, I just went to the eye doctor and got a new prescription for progressive bifocals <laughs> because I take my glasses on and off all the time. So it is time. So when I did something like this, I to thread my needle, I have to bring my glasses way up there. Anyway, I'm going to take the scissors back out for a second. And I am just going to sew this button on through my um, stuff. But I don't want the, the knot to be seen here, right, on the inside. Well, it won't matter because that's this is all going to be on the inside of a giant pocket. So it doesn't matter. But if you don't want it to be seen, if you're doing a... You know, if this is not going to be um, like a pocket, if you're doing the four pages thing, then you can hide it by just stitching through. The nice thing about felt is it's kind of got a top, <clears throat> because it's thicker, you can kind of make a, uh, you can stitch through just the top piece. But I'm going to go right through middle-ish here and sew this button on. While I do this, I will tell you guys that, because I feel like I don't need to teach you how to sew on a button. Um, I've got my window open just slightly. The jets have been circling, but they have not come right over yet, which always it always catches me off guard because you don't ever um, hear them until they've whipped past because they're going that fast. It's pretty cool. The, the power behind them is just enormous and incredible. And they fly overhead here because we're way rural, right? We're out, I'm in a town of 155 and we're way up in Northern Minnesota and there aren't that many like regular commercial jet flight patterns that come through here. So um, it's a great place for them to fly around and practice. So they'll practice dog fighting and it's pretty cool. It's intense. <laughs> anyway, this morning, this morning, last night on my phone, I got a severe weather alert and I thought, wow, it's been really cool. It's lovely. It's like early fall weather here, which is my absolute favorite, save for the allergies. Um, this is my favorite, favorite time of year. And early fall is just gorgeous up here. <clears throat> a few of the sugar maples are just starting to turn colors, which makes me then want to like knit and crochet and bake everything that I can think of with pumpkins and apples. That's my life. But this morning, the severe weather alert uh, was a frost advisory because it got down to 33 degrees. It didn't make it all the way to 32. 33 degrees last night, you guys. <laughs> Holy cow, it, that's when it gets real. All of a sudden, Ade, my husband and I are going, oh, we need to make sure we've got our, we heat with wood. So we're like, we got to make sure we, I'm going to leave this threaded. Um, make sure that we've got our wood stacked and stuff. All of a sudden, we've got some that needs to be cut. And we're like, oh, we need to get that taken care of. Um, On the end of this, so this will wind around here. And I'm going to leave some end hanging out because I've got some sewing charms somewhere. I don't know if they're out of my desk right now or not, but I will tie a sewing charm or a button. You can put a button on the bottom, but you want something to kind of weight it down a little. So another button just tied on the end would be cute, but I've got some little sewing scissors and machine charms and stuff. So to kind of get how long I want this, I'm going to hold it and then I'm going to wrap around a couple of times, one, two, three, and then I'm going to pull it up over top like this. And I'm going to go, okay, this is about how long I want it, just over the edge of this, like that much, this much right here, because it is going to kind of tuck down inside and go along that top pocket. So um, there's no way to really mark your thread. But I know that I've got it wrapped around there. I know I want it to be tensioned to about there. So this is where I want it to go through. And uh, I'm going to cut. I know I want it to go through there. So I'm going to cut myself a good length like this just so I've got some room to thread a needle and sew through. Oh, sadly, I have to unthread this one. I should have more than one needle out here. Okay, hold on. Let me do this up close to my face. All right. Glasses back on, needles threaded. 
All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go right through, I'm gonna put my scissors in. Because every pair of scissors, if you've got these little fancy scissors, right? We can't go through the middle of it like this. Excuse me, right through the middle of these two things because it'll just keep sliding all the way down. We don't want it to do that. I want it to catch over the top of one of these little ornate pieces. So when I slide my scissors in and I put some tension back on my little button thread here, what I want is instead of this to go in between those two, I want it to come just over the edge of one of those pieces because that will hold my scissors in. So I'm going to lay this flat because I don't want to pull too hard that it pulls that up, right? We're just imagining here what this will be like. Give it just enough tension so that this is tensioned but not pulling, pulling hard. Then I'm going to go over this piece and I'm just going to go right in through right above my paper, which is really hard to show you on camera. But I'm going right above where we sewed the pocket to the back. <clears throat> right, right above where we sewed the pocket to the back there. Now I'm going to create a knot here, but the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go like this just below where my stitching is here because remember there's paper on the back side of this. So I'm going to just catch that top layer of felt and sew through and make a knot. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. Catch the top layer of felt. I'm not going through the paper behind it and I'm going to make a knot. I'm just going to do a couple of these because this is going to receive a little bit of stress as you, you know, pull tight to, ouch, I just poked myself. As you um, pull tight to, like, put your scissors in, right? So I'm just kind of reinforcing my knot a few times. And again, felt has some pull. Now I'm just going to go through my little bundle of knots here. catch the felt, come back the other side and make my final knot and not jab it into my hand again. There we go. I'm going to just go around that knot one more time. Just fasten it off tight is what I'm saying, right? And you won't ever see any of this because it's going to be inside the pocket when we Sew it all together. I'm going to put my needle back in my cushion. There we go. Now we've got a little, I moved my scissor over there. Now when this is all blanket stitched together and everything, we've got a little scissor keeper. So it will hold your scissors in there. And look, it doesn't fall out because it's holding my scissors in. Ta-da! And then it unwinds, oh, which I did over the top, right? So now you'll be able to open it up, take your scissors in and out, put it back over the scissors. And you'll also have a cute little charm, you know, or buttons hanging on here and that can hang out the bottom of your book and look really cute. So, however, again, because the scissors are heavy and they make it hard to move this around while I'm sewing, I'm just gonna take this and tuck it inside my little paper lined pocket for now. And that way I can keep moving. <clears throat> Next, so that is the front side of our pocket, right? And this is eventually going to be, you know, this is a back side of our insert here. So that is the first pocket that we're going to make. Now the rest of this is really up to you where you want to put the pockets when you open it up. Oops. When you open it up, you can put various pockets. Let's make um, a needle keeper first because you can put pockets wherever you want to. On this one, since I put my big scissor pocket in the front, and then when you open it, you know, you can stick needles through here like this, right? You could put some sewing needles in there. You could put safety pins and attach them in here. It's just a kind of a substrate for putting needles and stuff into. When we open it up, 
we're going to, you know, these big pockets here will be able to hold some ephemera and stuff, larger stuff. But here we've got pockets. And All right, this is editing Nikki, future Nikki. <laughs> and this video was going to be way too long if I left it all together. So this is the first part where we made the, um, well, you saw what we made of the insert. And part two will be out in the next day here. And um, we will finish the insert and uh, sew it into our cover. And then I will see you after that for making the signature in the notebook. So thanks so much for joining me today. Have a great, wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Till I see you, God bless.